Hey, welcome, friend, to the Town Hall Academy from Remarkable Results Radio, the only and original weekly single-subject forum for the aftermarket perpetual student. It's your friend, Carm Capriato, and we are working diligently to share with you the voices, ideas, and insights that are shaping the future of the aftermarket. Now, in this episode, I've assembled a team of social media and marketing professionals to discuss social marketing strategies with an accent on messaging as the economy reopens and people are flexing their pent up get up and go muscles now some very powerful and key takeaways as usual right here on the town hall academy hey here's a very important note about shopware who is an important partner of the academy now more than ever you're focused on bringing cars through your bays safely and efficiently shopware's shop management system offers a completely contactless workflow. Your customers can review, approve, and even pay for their repairs right from their smartphone or personal device. Request a demo and see them in action at GetShopware.com. I am with Kim Walker from Shop Marketing Pros, Jennifer Filson from Rockstar Marketing, and Carrie Lynn Rodenberg from Turnkey Marketing. The ladies were on fire discussing their gospel as it relates to social media, branding, and storytelling. They will impress upon you to tell your customers' story and to make Facebook Live an important part of your reach. Here's a taste. You can't talk about the how without talking about the what. What what are you posting? And that's what she was just talking about. And I think it's also super difficult for shops to wrap their brain around or to change their habit of what to post. They think, okay, I'm going to go take a picture of this instead of learning to figure out how to capture the moment in the moment. Hello, friend, Carm Capriato, the Aftermarket Podcast Guy. Hey, did you know we broadcast the Town Hall Academy live every Friday at noon Eastern on Facebook, and then we release the podcast the following Thursday? Okay, in this episode with Kim, Jennifer, and Carrie Lynn, I enjoyed their enthusiasm and passion. Now, listen as they explain why you need to bring authenticity to every new relationship and why you need to take your tribe on a journey. This episode is packed, I mean packed, with over 20 great takeaways. And in fact, the talking points are listed on the show notes page, which would make a great meeting agenda. Find those talking points at remarkableresults.biz slash 8176. Hey, did you know that along with my friend Tom Ham, we've started a lively Aftermarket Weekly magazine? Go to aftermarketweekly.com and watch the first six episodes. Tell me what you think. I'd love to know. You now have a live weekly magazine video covering topics that are intended to spark your thoughts and create change. The big feature, the really big feature, is a shop tour each and every week. We broadcast live every Tuesday at noon Eastern Time. Please join us. Never, never miss the shop tour. You can watch every episode at aftermarketweekly.com. Hey, the ladies are here and they deliver the goods and you will either learn a lot or confirm your own social media strategies. Great topic today, social media strategies as we reopen the economy. So here's who's with me. Kim Walker from Shop Marketing Pros. Hi, Kim. Hi, everybody. Jennifer Phils and Rockstar Marketing. Hello. Jen and Carrie Lynn Roddenberg, Turnkey Marketing. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us, Carm. You're all experts in the field. I've done a podcast interview with you at Vision this year, which I think was the last live event I was at. Yes. And the last time I had a haircut was just a couple of days before Vision. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, we, Sherry Hamilton was on with us a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, Vision was an anchor for all of us to go back to, to think about, you know, pre-COVID. It's, it's going to be something we will not forget about what 2020 is. These ladies are experts in social media, and I can't wait to hear what they have to say about a few things that I've been thinking about. Let me share what I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about the word authentic, and I've been thinking about the word organic and community and family, business family, not only your own personal family. I've been thinking about restaurants lately. I was thinking about celebrations, and I was thinking about being grateful. And when I would put all those words together and I was going to sit down and create a social media marketing campaign, I would say that those would be good reference points. Very much so. Some people, it's hard to be authentic. It is. Maybe it was the way I was raised way down in the South. Like we're just wide open. 
you know, it is hard for people, even when we're talking to some of our customers and we'll offer ideas and say, hey, let's do this. Sometimes they're just uncomfortable with it. And there's also this fine line about being too personal or not being personal enough. And do I share this? Do I not share that? When you look at the trends in marketing every year, October, November, December, these things come out. And it's funny to me that every single year, one of the top trends is the word authenticity. I think it was 2019 that I was telling people it's time to quit talking about being authentic and actually be authentic. And what that really means is honestly, just be yourself, like quit being fake, quit pretending to be what you're not. And I mean, that sounds so general and hard to really kind of grasp. I hope people are understanding what I'm saying about that, but it's, it's removing the fear of sharing the culture of your company. You know, I was just talking to one of my teammates this morning about social media for one of our clients. And it's so overwhelming sometimes for shop owners to kind of let that veil down. We all think, and I was a shop owner, so we all think we're special and we're unique and we are. But let's face it, we're all repairing cars. We're all keeping people on the road safely. I think what we're really talking about is you're not doing anything so different from the next person except for your process and your people. So when that, when you put that together, what we're talking about is the culture of your company, the culture of your shop. So just kind of relaxing, let your hair down a little bit, let people see who you are. To me, that's what we're talking about when we're saying, what's it mean to be authentic on social media today? I find that authenticity is showing your vulnerability and your humanity. And a lot of people are afraid of showing their vulnerability. But the vulnerability is what actually allows you to connect to the heart with your tribe. When they see that you are human and that you are doing your best, they love you even more. Yeah. And I would say that when you look at your customers for a shop, you know, it's funny. One of my one of my employees was um, telling me the other day that he feels like he'll listen to phone calls for shops to evaluate them. And he's like, everyone just sounds scared. Customers call in, they, they're scared. There's always this thing that we need to overcome at a shop and it's to get trust, right? So everyone is scared. They're, they've heard these horror stories from you know those bad Apple mechanics back in the day. And it's, it's really put up a lot of hurdles for everyone in our industry now. And so building trust is key. And one of the ways to build trust is to connect with people and to show them, Hey, I'm like you, you know, for them to see you in their story or to hear your story and see themselves in it, if that makes sense. And they connect with you. So how do you do that? They're not mechanics. They're not technicians. They're not shop owners, right? So they're not going to connect with you as much there, but with your human side, with your, Hey, this is me eating lunch with my team side, or here's my five-year-old at her birthday party. Those are some things that are going to draw people in because they're more comfortable with those things. So it's going to connect with who they are as a person when they see who you are as a person. If I'm searching for a repair shop in Main Street America, do I have a chance to, or would I go to someone's Facebook page and find that audience? authenticity and that vulnerability or will I just pick up the phone hit my mobile and and, and I call I mean if I'm a new customer coming to a place and I don't know the authenticity that you and your family your business family have and I'm afraid Carrie Lynn uh, we need to teach our people at our counter to bring that authenticity or vulnerability to that call how do you make that work I think that it's kind of a multi-level thing. It's, it's yes and no. And yes, <laughs> your marketing is really a strategy. You know, social media is just one, you know, uh, cog in the wheel. So someone might be looking for a repair shop. They might get your postcard in the mail, which then causes them to Google you and see your Google ad, which then takes them to your website, which then takes them to your Facebook page. Cause they click on the little Facebook logo And so it's kind of this journey that they're on. So you have to take them down this journey and they might land at your Facebook or your Instagram and that, and on your website, those are some places where you can show them like, Hey, this is who we are. Yes. We're going to fix your car and yes, you can trust us. And here's, 
here are the reasons why, or here, here are some things that you can, you can trust about us. You can see about who we are. So the message here is to get the word out to the shops, the technicians who are going to be shop owners one day and realize that I can do more for my business by having a great marketing campaign. Jen, I think of you writing all these, all of you write story, you know, stories about your people and you, you spend time on the phone and you say, listen, tell me more, tell me more. You're writing a, you're writing a novel on your client. By the time you get to the end of that, do you start hearing that authenticity and vulnerability coming out? And then can you coach them to make Facebook and, and your public image like that? Yes. It's just like what Carrie was saying, but it, I put it in a little bit of different perspective. Marketing is an attitude, not a department. And it is everything that you, it's, it's that desire to serve. I know that in this industry, we have a lot of people with servants' hearts. And that service is what helps show the vulnerability, the humanity, but also, too, allows you to connect at a deeper level with your client base. And remember, you have to give before you can ask for something in return. So just picking up the phone during the COVID crisis, a lot of people were scared indeed. So the advice was, you know what, just call your client base and check in on them. Don't try to sell them anything. Just see how they're doing. Are they okay? And when people received those phone calls from those shops, they were delighted that somebody cared because everyone was in a state of some level of panic, whether it was, oh my gosh, I don't know how much money I've got or how am I going to get the food or are my loved ones going to be protected? Things are starting to ease up. But in a lot of people's minds, it's still like, oof, what's going to happen? What, what is my summer going to look like? What's my fall going to look like? Are my kids going back to school or not? There are so many questions. And so just letting people know that you, you hear them and that you are here to serve, whatever that looks like for them, that can make their lives easier because they're able to get their problems resolved when you make life simpler for them. One of the words that I also said in the beginning was organic, and I want to use that word organic, and I want to attach how to it. Because more of late, we talk in strategies, we talk high-level stuff, okay, I got to be authentic, and I have to be organic, and I got to communicate with family inside and out. Okay, well, I'll do that Wednesday. And the reason that I decide to do it Wednesday, and then Friday, and then next Sunday, and then the following Tuesday is because I don't know how to do it. I have that fear, I think, which you mentioned. But, Kim, if I was a new client of yours, and I said, I just can't. Kim says, let me take your hand and walk you through this. Ladies, tell us how to do this stuff. So, Carm, for us, when it comes to the how, I think that it's real important to step back and look at the whole picture, right? That's kind of a, a gift that I have learned that I have is being able to to really just step back and look at everything, which I love how Carrie mentioned journey. And she mentioned kind of that this is one, social media is one piece of your marketing puzzle, if you will. There's so much that goes into your marketing. When we step back and we look at the whole picture, that also typically puts people at ease because they're able to, when you guide them into let's let's just look at your whole shop like there's more to your shop than just fixing cars there's the people that make up your business your customers what there are you listening to them so we've been talking a lot about a book called they ask you answer and trying to shift the way that shop owners think about what their content is and really causing them to be more of listeners. What are your customers asking? So as we're unrolling every every part of the country is in a different phase, if you will. So depending on where people are in their state or in their community, um, they're, I mean, we're all essential businesses when it comes to shops. So most of them have, have remained open already, but the influx of people is going to change as far as car count and that sort of thing. But when, when you're talking about that, I want to help the shop owner really, again, just look at the whole picture. And when Carrie Lynn was talking about the journey, the customer journey. So when someone is Googling repair shop in Main Street America, one, they're on Google, right? And so what's going to come up is your Google listing. Are you posting 
like when I say posting, I'm talking about like, like a Facebook post. Have you posted on your Google listing so that when people do come to your Google listing, they're seeing more than just your hours, your reviews, right? Which are, are super important. That's part of the customer journey or part of the customer making a decision about calling you because they look at so much before they call you. They're going to Google, they're going to look at your reviews, they're going to go to your Facebook page and they're going to look at what you're posting, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or wherever. So I like to also tell shop owners to put your customer's eyes on, you know, take your eyes off and put your customer's eyes on and sit down and look at what your customer is seeing. I know when we had our shop, we literally, (laughs) I know y'all might think this is absolutely crazy, but we were super kid friendly. Like we had this little play area with toys and stuff. And we honestly got on our knees and crawled around to see what things looked like from our kids' perspective. Because when the mom comes into the shop, she's probably not sitting on the sofa or in the chair. She's probably on the floor with the kids while she's waiting. So look at your business from your customer's point of view. Go look at your Facebook page. Is the only thing that you're sharing are reviews that are automatically coming in or what else are you sharing? Shopware's innovative shop management system will give you back your time and put more money in your pocket. Make the switch today and watch technician efficiency gain 20%, enjoy increased recommended service, and even grow the highest parts profit margins ever with the smallest amount of work. You know, Steve from Ultimate Automotive says, I love that Shopware lets you complete every estimate on the inspection. And we even have a higher ARO, receive more approvals, and have had a significant increase in revenue. With our previous SMS, estimating was limited because it was so time-consuming. This impacted not only what we could sell on each customer's current visit, but also what we would have prepared for following visits. Hey, your peers are happy. Let Shopware work for you. Book a demo at GetShopware.com. How does someone start? Often people are too close to their own story. They don't realize that they're superheroes. They really don't. They're like, well, you know, we're honest and we're trustworthy and you can depend on us. But that's what everyone says. It's fascinating. Whenever I host my classes, you know, we talk about what is your why, what makes you special and unique. And it's so cool to, to look around the class, talk to everybody, and they start listing down all the things. Okay, we're reliable. We're a family-owned business. Uh, we love our community. This, that, this, that. We're honest. We're, yeah, all of these things, right? And then, and then everyone reads it out. I'm like, excellent. How many of all of us had the same answers? And everyone's like <laughs> nodding their head. I'm like, all right, let's dig a little deeper. What else? Who are you here to serve? What is going on? What are you passionate about? And that's when they dig deeper. They get a different level. And it's like, well, I'm very active in my church. And we are on a mission to help disadvantaged countries and communities that don't have water or don't have education. Or they're like, well, you know, um, I'm in it for my kids. I'm a breast cancer survivor and I want to promote this or I'm, you know, it's really interesting once they get past the, oh yeah, there is more to this, isn't there? It's kind of, it's like a multi-level cake. They're aha moments for people. Do they believe they could rally organically around something like that? Or is it just because they just can't get over uh, maybe being vulnerable uh, by, by exposing that story? Yes. When you share what makes you special and unique and you show the world how you are serving them, you're going to find a resonance with your tribe. The people that are looking for you They're going to find you when you share what it is that means something to you. And all the other people that don't quite resonate with that, that's okay. There are so many shops that have a tribe that follows them, right? And so there's plenty of room for everybody. It's just important to share what it is that makes you unique because otherwise you're going to stand in a lineup and look like everybody else. It's kind of like Absolutely. whenever I teach a class in person, I sometimes will wear my penguin shirt from the Monterey Bay Aquarium. I used to volunteer with the penguins, right? And I ask the crowd, I'm like, do you know how to tell penguins apart? 
And everyone's like, well, not really, because they all look the same, right? Maybe there's a couple of identifying spots or whatever, but really it's hard to tell. But the way that their mating ritual is, is that he present, he does his little dance and he presents a rock to her because he wants to start building a nest with her. And so he makes himself stand out amongst all the other penguins that look just the same. To the average shopper, to the average person that needs their car looked at, we all look the same. So what I do, what Carrie Lynn does, what Kim does, what we do is we celebrate your uniqueness so you stand out. Kind of similar to what Kim touched on earlier is you look at your customers. So even though you're talking about you, you look at your customers and who they are and then tell the bits of the story that would matter to them that would connect with them. Um, You always want to start with an end in mind and your customers are the end. Like Jennifer was saying, share things that make you unique, share things that are attractive to your customers and do it in visual ways. So one thing that's great is Facebook Live. Facebook created Facebook Live. They love the authentic, the organic, the uncurated, the messy, the ums, the stumbles, the you know, the kid running in the background, they actually love that. Um, They don't want the perfect commercial that costs $10,000 to create. They, they, their algorithms actually boost you more when you do more Facebook lives. So if you're thinking like, okay, this, what these ladies are talking about is great, but in reality, what do I do from here? I would say one thing is grab a pen and paper, write things down that, you want to share things that do make you unique, things that are interesting, write those down and then just start practicing. Whip out your phone and go onto Facebook and do a Facebook live and, you know, do something for one to three minutes and just share a bit about, about you and your shop, share about what your shop does, explain it in a way that people are going to understand. Don't think like a technician, think like, okay, someone who actually sees their vehicle as a tool and not like this cool thing that they think about all the time, what would they want to hear? What would they want to do? What would, what would cause them to get off of their couch and stop watching Netflix, pick up the phone and call my shop and bring their car in, especially during this uncertain kind of crazy time. And I want to throw in there, if you don't mind, Carm, she was um, talking about Facebook live. Know that, cause I tell people the same thing. I tell them, take their phone out, do a video with the complete intent of deleting it just so you practice feeling comfortable. But if you want to do Facebook Live so you get used to the steps for actually going through, don't forget to put a description in. We're talking about how. Be sure you put a description in. What is your Facebook Live about? What problem are you solving? Or what content are you talking about? What are you addressing? And then go through the steps. But there's also, people forget about this part, especially if you just want to try it out. The privacy. You can tell Facebook Live to do Facebook Live only to yourself. Like you can set the privacy so that your Facebook Live is only going live on your profile for only you. And then you can go back and watch it or it's not sh- it's not showing up in the feed to other people. So like I love that Carrie Lynn said just practice it. That's the biggest barrier when it comes to people, do, whether it's video that's recorded or Facebook Live, whatever, they're like, I'm not good on video and I don't like the way I sound. And, and you know, get it over yourself because you're falling behind if you're not getting on board with what's working today. Boy, is that the message you're falling behind, huh? And talk about human. You know, if you get on there and you say something that sounds kind of funny and you feel a little embarrassed, people can relate. You know, people Mm -hmm. see like, oh, this is a person. They're not this smooth, slicked back, like used car salesman, like what people fear, right? That's a mom. That's a dad. That's someone who's like me who does not have all their stuff together. (laughs) (laughs) But that's why people trust you because you're not perfect. Exactly. You're human. And if you're looking for something to say, then, you know, go with the three E's. Find something educational to talk about. Find something engaging to talk about. Find something that is uh, entertaining. I mean, I saw I saw the funniest little TikTok video. TikTok is all the rage, right? And I saw a tech in a shop pushing his toolbox cart around, but doing the moonwalk while doing it. 
And it was just a cute little, you know, 10 second little looped video, but it got a good laugh. And, you know, to see like a, a, a group of technicians doing a fun little TikTok dance, hilarious, right? Does it sell auto repair service? Not necessarily, but people remember you. So if you entertain them, educate them and, and engage them, you're going to be hitting a home run every time. You know, you you can't talk about the how without talking about the what. What what are you posting? And that's what she was just talking about. And I think it's also super difficult for shops to wrap their brain around or to change their habit of what to post. They think, okay, I'm going to go take a picture of this instead of learning to figure out how to capture the moment in the moment. So... When we had our shop, which was at the very beginning of Facebook, like very beginning of Facebook, my son, who's at basic training right now, um, when he was three years old, we had this little, every shop has this, the little miniature broom, and he was just sweeping. Like, we didn't tell him, like, just those kind of moments, because... You're a mom, you're a parent. When you post, look how cute, we're training him young, we're raising him upright, whatever. People connect to that. Like Carrie Lynn said, it's the humans, the human element. So I don't think we can talk about how without talking about what. You know, what are you posting? And just learning to retrain yourself to be able to say, oh, that's a great thing to share. One of our clients sent us a picture of the technician in his toolbox like you know the the super duper toolboxes like where you've got the big open spot above the the tool the drawers he was goofing off and got in there and they thought to take a picture of that and send it and it's just fun fun authentic and in the moment yeah and then the caption could be we really get into our work oh yeah oh that's cool <laughs> exactly <laughs> i will say like along the lines of practicing too see things as practice. You know, maybe you take a picture and you're like, this is so funny. This is so witty. Everyone's going to love it. And you get like two likes and no comments and no one loves it. That's going to happen. Don't let that disturb (laughs) you. Don't let that prevent you from doing it in the future. Oh, well, move on. Okay. That one didn't work. Back to the drawing board. Do another one. Well, just to elaborate on what you're saying is you post it and you look at it and you say, oh my gosh, there's only two likes on that. There's no comments and nobody shared it. You need to dig deeper because when you go into the insights and you look, you might have had 12 clicks on that post. Well, that could have been a click to your your actual page. It could have been a click for them to click on a link that you put with that photo. There's more to the success of a post than what you see on the outside, if that Amen. makes any sense. That's a really, really, Amen. really good point that most people don't even have on their radar. It's what is the end goal? Is the end goal for people to just like it? I mean, it's good and it's good for like the Facebook algorithm, but the end goal is to get people in her shop. Yep. This was such a great segment that you did, and, and I think Carrie Lynn, I wrote down as you were you were doing this great monologue. I wrote down, look for the story around you, and be aware. Uh, you know, your senses have to come out. If I'm going to make social media, no matter what p- portion, whichever platform I'm going to be on, and it needs to be authentic and organic and family and business and and authentic. I have to find that through the story that's around me. So maybe part of the how, how do I, how do I move myself up and over the line is to look for the story around you. And I, and I know you, you all are into the story side of businesses and how we can sell, sell that, that story. This is going kind of very much into the places that I wanted to because as we reopen the economy, ladies, what I want to say is that do we have to rethink what the messages are? You know, is the message of safety, the car's been down, are you going to do more local drives? You're not going to get on an airplane, maybe not even a train or a bus, but you're going to get in the car. I guess the camping world is on fire right now. Kim, you know, Kim is on a 10 week road trip and their husband with her husband, Brian. And that is just the coolest thing. The message about opening the, the economy, being safe, reliable. And, and, and as another side note, I have been chatting with so many shop operators in the last four or five days. Their businesses are on fire. They're, they're out two weeks. And so 
the good thing is is that we've been an essential business and the other thing is is that maybe because of all the work we've done on social media and marketing and engaging with our customers that the flow of work is coming in if it's not for you what what's the message in the reopening the economy the people who were seeing a level of concierge service during covid the touchless service, the the ability to pay online, the cleanliness, the pickup and delivery, all of those things. That was something that shops had been told by their coaches for a long time that that would be a nice thing to implement. It brought COVID to that level and now people want to keep it. So keep it going because again, it differentiates you and it's you've taken it to the next level. So keep that going. A lot of times I hear, does, does social media really work? Does it really have a return on investment? I've had a lot of people question the validity of it. But once again, COVID has shown us kind of a silver lining. Yes, people are spending a lot of time on their phones. A lot of time. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the, the t- amount of time that I, I was already on my phone a lot beforehand, but geez, right? And, and the, if you want to be seen, you need to be seen on that phone. You just period, right? So for all of the shops that have been playing the social media game, well, yay, you are seeing wonderful results. Congratulations. And for all of the shops who are doubters, okay, it's time. Don't worry. The plane has not completely left, but you need to get on it. What do we say to customers as we're getting ready to open and they're, they're, they're venturing out? Not that they've not been ever out, but now they have a chance to go and sit at a restaurant outside and sit down and say, oh, where are we going to go? Let's, let's take the SUV and let's go there. How do we talk to them about the safety and reliability of their car? What do we say? You know, in this industry, if you will, with regard to automotive repair, we also have clients that are RV repair. And then we have clients that are sort of attached to that in the travel world. I think you have to understand where your customers are in their life, in their journey, what they're doing, right? So you talked about Brian and I are on this 10 week long road trip. We rolled up onto this little beach town we had never heard of on in coastal South Carolina. Actually, I might have been in Georgia. I don't remember. But Tybee Island. I'd never heard of it in my entire life. I've been there. I'm like, everybody in the world obviously knows about this place, but I don't. But what I'm getting at is that we rolled up in there. We were in Savannah and saw just a a booklet that said Tybee Island, Savannah's Beach. And we were like, okay, well, let's ride over there. It was only like an hour away. We roll up in there. This is just like two weeks ago, like COVID time. There's people everywhere. I'm talking, we were blown away, overwhelmed. When we went to park, I asked the lady, I'm like, what's happening here? Like, what is going on? And she said, the only thing I can tell you is COVID. People are sick of being inside and they want out and get get out. So understand what people want right now. And if it's that they want to get in their car and drive, then your message is, let me help you get out in your car and drive. Come in and let's do a pre-road trip inspection. Let us check your car out, make sure that you're going to be good to go. It's just understanding your customers. And so I read this in some devotional or something recently, and it's about not letting your struggle be wasted. What's the struggle that people are have just been faced with and what they're coming out of? And how can you assist them in the coming out? How can you assist them in rolling into the next phase or the next step? How can you make them feel comfortable? So I don't know if that really answers your question, Carm, but... That's just kind of where I am on it. I think that we're not reinventing the wheel necessarily, but maybe just how the wheel turns. Like, it's still the wheel. It's not a whole new message, but it's connecting the dots and just tweaking it a little bit so that it connects with what people are thinking about. So people are thinking about, I'm stuck at home. Write down a list of what are my customers thinking about right now? Write that down and then create social media posts that connect with that, obviously connect with it. Like maybe your social media post says, sick of being stuck at home, get out. You know, like, like Kim was saying, like bring your car down today and we can make sure that it's safe to drive after sitting in your garage for 10 weeks. But just connecting the dots, connecting with where people are and then 
pulling them from, here's what they're thinking about. Maybe they're not, they're thinking about they want to get out in our minds because we are in the auto repair industry. We are often thinking like, well, they want to get out. Of course they need to come in for a pre-trip inspection. But the average consumer isn't thinking that. They're just thinking, do I have sunblock? Do I have, where am I going to go? You know, like, what do I need to do to get out? They're not thinking like, well, is my check engine light on? And how, how, what percentage are my brakes at? You know, that's not what they're thinking. So you have to connect the dots to what they're thinking and then the end that you want them to do or the action that you want them to take. If I may add, you girls get, just gave me a really great marketing idea for any shop. So shops, listen up. Here's an idea for you. What if when people came in for the pre-trip inspection, right, and you offered them a little addition to put into their first aid kit, what if you gave them a little baggie of a few masks so they could go inside and outside of restaurants and such, some hand sanitizer, maybe some uh, uh, little hand swabs and like just a little kit for like sanitation that you could give them as a little thank you gift for coming in. That would make somebody's road trip so much easier. Throw some toilet paper in there, whatever. Like like a little sanitation safety kit to go into their first aid kit. And they'll be like, oh, thank you. Because I don't know about you guys, but like I'm seeing all kinds of statistics. Now, Kim's got her own rig. She can go potty. But like, I don't want to travel. You know why? I don't know which bathroom I'm going to use. You know what I'm saying? Like... Like, is everything going to be open for me at the time of day that I need it to be? You know what I'm saying? So, so if you guys can, can make their journey that much easier, safer, cleaner, protected, et cetera, you struck a home run. Yeah. And you know what? That reminds me that a lot of us who are seeing people day in, day out shops, you are dealing with people day in, day out. You're not sitting at home. You're not stuck at home. You're going into work. You're an essential worker. So you're kind of getting more used to being out in the community. And so something that I keep hearing from a lot of shops is, uh, I don't want to see anything that has to do with COVID. I don't want to hear anything that has to do with COVID. I don't want to hear that anymore. But again, remember your customer because your customer is not over COVID yet. So continue to remind them, yes, we are continuing to take these steps. Yes, we are going to continue to take these precautions to keep you and our our, our staff safe. There's fatigue in talking about it and we're all like just wanting to move on. But don't forget that your customers are not necessarily there yet. So do everything you can to overcome their fears, you know, to make them feel comfortable and make them choose you. What you're saying, Carrie Lynn, is be consistent. Yeah, be consistent and just be aware of your customers and their needs and their questions and their fears. And I think that's even part of the conversation you have with them because I'm I'm right on track with what Carrie Lynn is saying. But on the flip side of that, there are some people who are just over it. They're like, I am done, done, done. I don't care. I was just reading, so I'm from Louisiana, our governor just did a, uh, a post today about wearing masks, and I'm telling you 90% of the comments on that post were like, I know what you can do with your mask, <laughs> you know, so it, Carrie Lynn just said, know your customer, so it might just be part of the conversation when they get on the phone with them, like, how are you doing? Like, where are you in this thing? Are you over it? Are you still scared? Like, how are you feeling? Because then you can meet them where they are a post that says, are you over it? Boy, that's a conversation starter, wouldn't it be? Ladies, um, you nailed it. I I knew it. Any final words that you'd you'd all love to contribute here to the show? Jen, anything? Yeah, I've got some classes coming up and I would love it if people came and joined me because they're free. I know that's everyone's favorite four-letter word lately. So I'll be teaching my video marketing class for Milwaukee on Thursday, the 18th of June. And I'm going to be showing five different ways to use video for messaging. So I'll show you the hows and the whats and the whys and how to do it and all the the, the do's and don'ts. I'm also writing a book and I thought I would start by having a webinar and it's called Give to Get. Essentially, it's a course in relationship marketing. It's that authenticity. It's that servitude. And it's creating a bunch of raving fans because of it. So the webinar is going to be the, a three-part series, and I'm going to be teaching the first one on June 24th. So if you send me an email at jenniferfilzen at gmail.com, 
or if you go to Rock Star Marketing, rock-star-mktg.com, you'll see the different classes that we're doing. And we also have a virtual summit coming up in August. Because again, where am I coming from? Well, I'm a marketing agency. I'm not really the teacher. I'm, I'm really the marketer, but I love to share information so we can all win. We are all in this together and we are all one tribe. So why not lift everybody up through free classes? Thank you, Jen. Appreciate that. And by the way, so that everyone knows, we've all done uh, podcasts together. Thank you. We've done some of them together. I mean, Kim and Carrie Lynn were a great episode uh, on, on this kind of subject. And of course, Jennifer and her husband were in with me and we did one that was just recently released. So thank you all for supporting the show. Kim, any final words? Yeah, just two quick little things. One, um, Jen, Jen just reminded me, I have a class coming up too. Um, this one, I'm going to be teaching you. There's no no presentation. It's live. I'm going to be teaching people, especially speaking of social media, how to use two of my favorite tools for social media. One is Buffer to schedule your posts. And one is Canva to create really fun, cool graphics. Um, so that's coming up. Just check out shopmarketingpros.com because quite honestly, I don't remember the date or time or whatever. And then I just want to remind people to don't let your struggle go to waste. Struggle forward. Take whatever you've learned in this whole season we've been in and let's move forward in a more positive way. Just don't let your struggle go to waste. Great advice. Carrie Lynn, you got the last word. If anyone has any questions or is just sick and tired of doing their marketing themselves and just kind of wants help and wants kind of like a marketing department, uh, please reach out, go to turnkeyautomarketing.com to learn more. My last bit is just remember that you are doing good work that serves the world and your good work enables people to do the things that they need to do and the things that they love to do. So don't ever feel like, man, I'm, you know, I have a repair shop. And that's, and that's just what I do. No, like that is huge. You're giving people the freedom to go places, to go on vacation, to go to the hospital, to go, you know, the places that they need to go to, to the grocery stores. So what you do matters. Um, and that's something that we at Turnkey Marketing really, truly, deeply believe. So thank you for your service. And thank you for staying open during these crazy times. Just have so much respect and love for you guys. So keep on keeping on. Uh, ladies, inspiring. Thank you all so much. Have a great weekend. Thank you for your contributions. Lift all ships, baby. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.